Frankly, there is no more time. We're out of time. There's no more time to wait. There's no more time to stand by and hope that somebody's going to swoop in and rescue us. There is no more time waiting for things to change or get better. It's entirely on our shoulders. So the question is, are you going to keep standing on the sidelines, waiting for somebody to be the hero and swoop in and save it? Or are you going to step up like the true leader that you were born to be and be a part of the change? There is no more time to make that decision. The time is now. You're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. Step up. Be that leader you were meant to be. We need you right now. Let's go. What's up, my friends? JT DeBolt with you today for the True Driven Podcast. The podcast for the few, the true, the driven. Those amazing people we call the True Driven. And I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is for you, no matter where you might be tuning in from on the Big Blue Marble. Thanks for joining me here. As always, appreciate you guys following us and make sure you catch us, of course, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Not only just follow us there, make sure you subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can be the first to know and stay in the know when we drop the new content. And I say thank you so much as well for sharing this far and wide. In fact, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for being considerate enough of other people to go, you know what, you might you might benefit from this message. This crazy old Navy pilot, he's got a thing or two to share because he's seen a thing or two, especially when it comes to leadership and especially right now. In fact, today's message is, it's timely. It has a lot of things, you know, it's, it's kind of in the spirit of a lot of what's going on right now, but I think it's also timeless. We're going to be talking specifically today about how you can stand out, but more importantly, manage yourself, lead yourself in uncertain times. What to do during difficult, uncertain, sometimes frightening times. And I think we can all agree that right now we are definitely in one of the darkest chapters, if not the most challenging chapters, in recent human history. It's been ongoing for a couple of years. Doesn't matter what side of the political aisle you're on, I don't personally care. You have to be able to objectively look back and go, this ain't great. (laughs) What do we do about this? And it's actually that follow on question. I think people don't ask enough. What can I do about this? But I know a lot of you true drivens out there have been asking that question. What can I do? What can I do in the face of all this adversity? What can I do in the face of all this uncertainty? And if that's what you've been thinking If you've been pondering that question, wrestling with that question, maybe even struggling with it a little bit, I just want to congratulate you and say, I appreciate you guys having that kind of focus. So today, today's topic, today's conversation is all about that. And my intention, my focus for today is to help you gain some clarity around how to best lead yourself, therefore, you know, having the ability to lead other people during uncertain times. Now, again, I'm recording this, you know, in in March of 2022. So all you have to do is kind of go back and do a little bit of research on where we are in the world, what's going on. But what I'm talking to you about today can apply to any time. And yeah, we're, we're talking about all the shit that's going on in the world, but this can be applicable to your personal scenario, personal situation that you have, whether it be at work, whether it be with your family, could be anything. So the, the things that we're talking about today are skill-based and they're timeless. That's my focus for you today and always here with the True Driven Podcast. One thing that comes up quite a bit, I think, as leaders is we have this sense that we are the ones that have to have the solutions. We're the ones that have to have the answers. And look, it makes total sense. You know, people are looking to us. We're the ones they look to. As I've said before, in case of emergency, break glass, right? You're the one behind that glass that they're reaching for. That's the idea. That's the point of leadership is to be somebody who is valuable enough, sought after, but more importantly, somebody who can be counted on. 
But it's very challenging at times to always feel that pressure, that burden of leadership. And half the time, we're trying to figure this crap out for ourselves. We're looking around going, what the fuck is going on? It almost seems like the world is coming apart at the seams, it's collapsing in on itself. So what do we as leaders, what can we do to help make the situation better? You have to understand that part of this is designed. What I'm about to say to some people may come off as some tinfoil hat conspiracy theory, but it's not. You don't have to go very far or think very deeply to see the truth behind the idea that there is probably an agenda, more than likely, that is being driven to divide us. That's the only thing that seems to make any sense, no matter what side of the political aisle you're on, no matter how you have, you know, whatever your personal beliefs are around certain things, certain topics, certain, you know, hot subjects that are that are floating around these days. You have to kind of wonder, are we better off right now than we were two, three, four, five years ago? It's really hard to say, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in some cases we are. And the reality is we actually are. In fact, we've never been safer. We've never had more convenience. We've never had things more readily at our fingertips, especially information, knowledge, and so on. But the challenge is, is that sometimes that deep well of resources has been polluted. And so we had to be very, very careful. And this is the reason I tell you guys to always be thinking critically, asking questions. What about this is true? Oh yeah, I might believe this. I might want to get behind it. I might agree with it. But ask yourself the question, is what I'm hearing, is what I'm consuming, is this based in fact? Is it based in truth? I challenge you guys to think that way even about what I share with you. And granted, a lot of what I talk about is my personal perspective on things based on experience and also based on the intent of really truly wanting to help you. Coming from a place of authentically caring about you, caring about leadership in general, and believing that there's such a big fucking gap in it in the society that I have taken this as my calling, as my mission to help you become better leaders. So I'm going to naturally have an agenda myself. I'm just going to call it like it is. So in that sense, if I have a personal agenda, if I'm going to lead with some opinion at times, quite often, frankly, I would challenge you to challenge me. Ask the question, does this make sense? Does it make sense for you? And if the answer comes up, no, that's okay. I'm fine with that. I just want to be clear. This is not about me having all the answers, nor is it me being the authority in an area even if I feel like I've got some great value to give. That's exactly the example that I want to, want to set that I want you to follow as well. Have the confidence and if nothing else, then the trust in yourself to know that you have value to give as a leader and you don't have to have all of the answers. You don't have to have it right all the time. More importantly, what's going to guide you and keep you in a more effective state state of mind, state of focus, state of energy, is to ensure that you're not falling for the narrative of feeling like you have to be certain. Man, this addiction that we have to certainty is causing a lot of pain. Feeling certain is a misguided belief that we're right. that we've somehow got it all figured out. We've got all the answers. No need to look further. Our way of thinking about things, seeing things, our way from of operating, it, that is the best way. And listen, for us, that's true, but it's not necessarily true for everybody else. And that is the problem. That's the rub. That's the pinch. That, frankly, is where the problem meets the road. The rubber of the problem meets the road in this sense that because we feel so certain about things, we have figured out that it works for us and therefore it must work for everybody else. When we behave from that place, not only is it ineffective, but it can be, it can absolutely be crippling to a leader. 
Because at that point, what you've basically said is I'm surrendering my ability to think critically because I'm not taking in any new information and nor nor is that information coming at me in a place where I'm filtering it from a place of seeking the truth. Because the truth might actually demonstrate that I don't, in fact, have it all figured out. That I may actually be wrong about this or that or that person. And that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Because it would illuminate a blind spot, a gap, possible weakness in my plan. So as leaders, we can't afford to go down that primrose path of thinking that we got it all figured out. Or putting the undue and unnecessary pressure on ourselves to be the person who projects this image that we have it all figured out. People follow true people. They want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear some bullshit manufactured idea. They want to hear a person who's willing to say, I don't know if I have it all figured out, but I will do everything I can to get to the center of the, the situation to, to dig through the truth and there and then I will share it with you after I've you know as I'm going through this that's what more people want unfortunately we have these fucking idiots in office in government I don't care what country you're in it's probably affecting you everywhere right no matter where you might be listening to that come off as if they have all the answers don't question me don't question my authority don't question what I'm telling you because I have it right And then they turn around and they fall over on their face. They prove just how fucking stupid they are, how inept they can be. And more importantly, how much ego and arrogance went into projecting and defending, defending that dogma. Crazy as it may be, people follow it. Even when they fuck up, these people are like, well, they know what they're doing because they're in a position of of authority because they're in a position of authority, but not leadership. There's a big fucking difference. We have to have the courage. We have to have the critical thinking skills. We have to have the internal character strength to be willing to ask questions. Asking questions comes from curiosity. Curiosity is the cure for certainty. This blind spot we give ourselves with this addiction, this need for certainty, is creating a vacuum, a void of leadership. So if you want to know what to do now in uncertain times, number one, drop the addiction for certainty. Now look, I get you need a certain degree of certainty. We all need a certain degree of certainty. We got to know, we got to be certain that the sun's going to come up tomorrow. We got to be certain that the ceiling isn't going to cave in on us in our building that we're standing in. We got to be certain that, you know, certain things are going to operate the way they always have. I understand that because to operate with zero certainty is just as chaotic as operating from a place of needing it to be 100% perfect all the time. Being certain that everything's going to work out the way we want it to or the way we expect it to. The certainty addiction is a no-go for leaders. And so when you hear these motivational gurus trying to sell you on finding certainty, be very, very careful how much of that bullshit you consume because it will poison your soul from the inside out, especially as a leader. The antidote to that poison is curiosity, asking a lot of questions, being open to what you receive, but also questioning even that information. Not from a place of like schizophrenic, I can't trust anything. That's not what I'm saying either. You got to be rooted in your values, your vision, your mission, your purpose, what I call the big four. Guys, have heard me talk about this in previous episodes. Go back if you need to and listen to those. It's in damn near every fucking episode. But the importance of being clear on what you stand for and what you stand against will help you better decipher and filter that information coming at you so that you'll know, is this something that works for me? Can I use this to help me move forward? Business, life, mission, whatever that thing is. And again, being okay going, hey, listen, this is my truth, not everybody else's. We got ourselves as a society wrapped around the axle 
in a fucking ineffective way where we're tearing ourselves apart, which again, I truly believe is part of the agenda from the power elite. We're better divided for them because they're easy. We're easier to control. I can't prove this. So don't come at me and fact check me and say, well, there's no proof to what you're saying. And I'm not here to say that it is fact. I'm saying it's a, it's an observation of mine. What would I do if I was sociopathic? It's pretty hard to think like that, isn't it? What would I do if I was trying to control the masses? Well, first of all, trying to control a bunch of people is going to be difficult when they're all united, when they're all unified, when they stand together in opposition to what I want. So if I want to control them, which is clearly not in their best interest, I'm going to keep them divided. I'm going to divide them through race. I'm going to divide them through gender or some version of it. I'm going to divide them in their beliefs. I'm going to make them believe that they are actually dangerous to one another. I'm going to make them believe that if they do or don't receive the vaccine, doesn't matter to me. I don't actually care one way or the other whether you do. I just want you to be at odds with each other based on that. I don't care whether or not you wear a mask or don't because I just want you to be at odds. That way I can control you. That's what's going on here. So I don't personally care. JT DeBolt does not necessarily care about your beliefs on those things so long as you come from a place of saying, you know what? I know what's right for me. I know what's right for my tribe. And I'm going to march forward. And what everybody else chooses to do, I will accept that and let them do their thing. But I will not divide myself from that person just because we see the world differently. If you want to know what to do during uncertain times, drop the uncertainty and stop falling for the narrative that we are divided or that we need to be because we see things differently. Half of the bullshit that is believed right now, half of the agenda being pushed is winning because people are blindly compliant and accepting of the fucking message. They're not thinking critically. In fact, the reason mostly people don't think critically or think at all is because it seems like hard work. It's easier to blindly follow somebody you've already agreed to have blind allegiance to, whether it be a celebrity, a sports star, or a fucking politician. It's so much easier to just take their word for it than to ask the question. It's so much easier to just accept the message and the agenda at face value rather than saying, wait a second, where the fuck is this coming from? And what's the deeper cause? What's the deeper meaning behind this? And where does this thing eventually lead? As a leader, you have to be willing to go out on the skinny branch that skinny branch that feels like it won't support your weight, that skinny branch where nobody else will go, the thin ice, as they say. You have to be willing to go out into those sometimes terrifying territories where you feel like you're standing alone. You have to be willing to drop the addiction for certainty and adopt the passion of curiosity. Now, as we start to do this and start to get rid of this need for certainty, it actually emboldens us as leaders. It sets us apart. It gives us the ability to now think and operate in a different sense. But now we have to start putting our focus into the right places, into the more effective places. And focus, focus is an interesting thing. It doesn't take too much for you to experience this, but if you ever need a reminder, you have a limited amount of focus in any given time. And your focus is often driven by your physiology. So how well you slept, how hydrated you are, how well fed you are, you get the idea. It's also impacted by how much stuff you have on your plate mentally, how many decisions you've made already, how many decisions you need to make later, how much people are hitting you. And as a leader, you feel this more than everybody else. Your focus feels like it's spread thin because it's put in all these different places. Again, like I was talking about where the power elites want to fracture us by spreading us out and dividing us, the same exact fucking thing is going on right now with your attention. Don't focus on this. Focus on this. Oh my God, this is more important. And oh, by the way, we fucked this up, so we don't want you to pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. This is the bigger threat. 
Well, the same thing happens with your attention as a leader. People are like, hey, I need you here. I need this. And your compulsion, your desire to help people and to lead people, in some cases to please people, I know some of you who do this, is killing your ability to be the best you you can be, to lead with power, to be that driven leader, that true driven leader that you were destined and born to be, designed to be. So what do we do about this? What can we do about this? What's important? First and foremost, you have to realize your focus is limited. It can only be, there's only so much of it. The other part about it is it has to be targeted. In fact, we can even use the target as a visual. So think about a target, anything. A target, you know, like a circle. Something you'd shoot a rifle at, shoot an arrow at, throw darts at, doesn't matter what the projectile is. What is the objective of hitting a target? Do you just want to hit the big circle? Most people want to hit the bullseye. And if you can visualize a target, you realize the bullseye is dead center in the target, and it's also the smallest portion of the target. It has the smallest amount of space. But when you hit that target in the bullseye, you get more points. It's more valuable. Even though it's smaller, it's more valuable. In fact, because it is smaller, it's more valuable. And then you've got a concentric ring around the bullseye, right? It's bigger and less valuable. And then the ring outside of that is bigger yet and less valuable still. So purposes of this conversation about focus, we have to think about this. The outer edge of that target is fixed, meaning it can't grow. Because you've heard the old saying, probably to the point where it's lost its, its meaning and its impact, but what you focus on expands. Same exact concept. You only have so much focus and what you focus on becomes more prevalent in your area of your, your realm of consciousness. If you're focused on health and fitness, you become healthier and fitter. fitter. If you're focused on your relationships, your, re your relationships grow. If you're focused on building income, building wealth, there you go. The money will come. But if you're focused on negativity, if you're focused on all the shit that's going on in the world, if you're focused on everything that's not going your way, or more importantly, you're focused on the shit that's outside of your locus of control, guess what? That stuff starts to creep in. It starts to weigh you down. It starts to sap your creative, your creative juices. It, so it starts to draw, drain you of not just your, your, your energy, but your life force, your best qualities, your talents, your skills, your experience. Because your focus is on all the other shit that you can't control. As a leader, you've probably experienced this. And you might be saying, yeah, I get it intellectually, JT. But here's the question I'm challenging you with. You might get this intellectually, but how much of this are you actually putting into practice? Putting into play on a continual daily basis in your business, your career, your life. If you think about the concept of what you focus on expands and apply it to that target, Think of that dead center bullseye. If we focus on the bullseye, it actually becomes bigger in our field of view. But more importantly, if we're focusing on what's dead center, that also starts to become bigger in where we place our, our energy. We think more about it. Therefore, we have more resources to pour into making that thing expand. It literally expands and it starts to occupy more of the space on the overall target. So let's apply this to our business and life. Let's apply this to our leadership role. You have to think of, especially in uncertain times, when things are crazy and you're wondering, how the hell do I keep myself even keeled? How the hell do I keep other people on track? How do I keep the wings level, nose on the horizon, and the mission forefront? First, recognize that that bullseye is you. Not because it's smaller and you're less significant than the world, but because it's such high value. You putting focus on you is dead center, the most valuable real estate in your target of focus. Your target of focus, if you can focus on the bullseye, that means you. you rep it re represents you. Now, the outer circle that surrounds the bullseye is represented by the situation, whatever that might be, the situation at work, the situation with your business, the situation with that client, that pain in the ass, or that dream client. 
the situation with the economy, the government, all the bullshit that you see and consume on, on the world outside of you. And oh, by the way, just for clarity, that stuff you're consuming through the lens of mainstream media, social media, big tech, and they all have an agenda to keep you fucking stuck. So just know if you choose to put your attention and focus on that, what you're basically taking in is pure fucking garbage. Be careful of what you consume. So the ring outside of you is the situation. The ring outside of that is everyone else. The least valuable part of our focus target. And yet, the part where so many people invariably default to when things start to break down. We start focusing on everybody else, what they are doing or what they're not doing. And again, if it doesn't match up to what we're certain about, we see them as at odds with us. This is the whole point. Remember what I was talking about just a moment ago with the agenda, the hidden agenda? The potential hidden agenda is to divide us. Well, guess what? If you're seeing the lens, seeing the world through the lens of certainty, you're naturally going to see people who are different than you or behaving or thinking or, or showing up believing differently than you as the enemy or the opposition. And if we spend too much time focused on that, that focus, since it can't go outside of the boundary, which is fixed, we only have so much focus, it starts to cloud and it starts to encroach on that inner circle of the situation. And then pretty soon it starts to encroach on the inner circle of us. In other words, we spend so much fucking time focused on other people that we're not focused on ourselves. This is how come it's critical on, uh, during uh, you know, chaotic times tumultuous times, turbulent times, to first default to the behavior of focusing in on what we can control. The feeling of anxiety, the feeling of stress, the feeling of the world coming undone at its seams is simply you feeling out of control. So, the real simple antidote, not easy but simple, is to then turn the focus inward. Ask yourself the question, what about this can I control? What is in my circus or my locus of control? And if you think about yourself physically standing there, almost like a view from the top down, you are the bullseye. The dead center, the right center part of that bullseye is internal of you. So what is it internally that you can focus on? your beliefs, your thoughts, your feelings, all of those all of those things you actually have control over when you shut out all the other bullshit, when you shut out the focus on the on the situation, when you shut out the focus on other people, you actually begin to have the power back. You begin to take back control because now instead of focusing on that shit, you're focusing on yourself. You will instantly start to feel better. The question is what about right now can I control? You can control your physiology simply by breathing. Notice when you're stressed. Notice when you have anxiety. Notice when you feel out of control where your breath is. If it's like that, then it's time to, to breathe even deeper. It's time to be able to say to yourself, okay, great. If you do box breathing, I learned this from a Navy SEAL by the name of Mark Devine. He's got some great books out there. Former Navy SEAL. Uh, the, uh, and this is something that the SEALs employ and I've employed for years, box breathing. It's where you take a four-second inhale. And then you hold it for four seconds. And then you exhale for four seconds. And hold that empty lung for four seconds. And then after four, you take the breath and you continue. You do a few cycles of this, you're instantly going to feel better. So if you find yourself saying, what can I control? Everything seems crazy. Everything seems chaotic. The first thing is, is your breath. Get your physiology under control. And now you can actually start being more effective. The next step to this is to start concentrating on the areas where mentally you can put your best efforts is it into your creativity? Is it into your business? Is it into the things that you're currently working on? Chances are very high, yes. What is your mission? What is it you're currently working on? Instead of all this other shit that's going on in the world, focus in on your mission. Focus in on, look, 
even if you need to, the best thing you can do besides getting your physiology under control is to start focusing on your physical health. Your physiology plus your physical health plus taking care of the inner parts of this will automatically put you back into control like instantly. And and what you'll notice is that instead of feeling totally out of control, you're going to feel much more prepared to deal with the shit that is coming at you. The reason being is because instead of you focusing on literally everything or feeling like you have to, you start to compartmentalize and apportion your focus into the areas that are critical. So now we're talking about us as that center, center bullseye growing more valuable. And in so doing, that focus is encroaching into these other areas of focus on the situation and others. It doesn't mean that we're taking up more space than is ours. It doesn't mean that we're pushing each other, you know, pushing people away. What it means is instead of us playing small, we're playing bigger. Instead of us playing from a place of fear, we're playing coming from a place of courage. Instead of us playing from a place of feeling like a victim, we're actually resourceful. We can contribute to the situation. We can contribute to other people. And that's where we can then begin to think about what is it that I can do right now with this situation? And here's my simple answer to pretty much anything. Anytime you're in a challenging situation, anytime you're in a situation where you feel the world is coming fucking unglued, anytime you're in a place where you're like, man, this ain't going to end well. And you say, what is it that I could possibly do in a world that's lost its fucking mind? I'll tell you what the answer is. Be the best you you can be. Be the best leader. Be the best husband or wife, spouse. Be the best father, mother, supporter, caretaker. Be the best son, daughter, brother, sister. Be the best neighbor. Be the best citizen. Be the best American or whatever country you might reside from. Be the best you can be. Nobody's asking you to be the best, period. And you guys, if you followed me long enough, you know my mantra. Don't be perfect, just be awesome. Nobody's asking you to be all things. And listen, I know you're a leader. I know you feel that pressure. I know that your shoulders are broad and sometimes it feels like the, the, the weight of everything is on you. Just remember, you don't have to be perfect, my friend. You just have to be awesome. And the best part about that phrase, the truth of that phrase is this. It doesn't matter if it's your best day or your worst day. It doesn't matter if you've got a full gas tank or you're at 10% and that fucking glowing e-light is, is, is sitting there on the, on the dashboard. What you have to offer is always awesome. If you have the courage, if you have the generosity, if you have that entrepreneurial or that leadership spirit, if you have the true driven spirit in you, then your best will always come out. Your best will always be enough. Your best will always be awesome because you're operating from that place of identity as a true driven. If you st still need help developing that true driven identity, stand by to get some. Stay tuned. The most important thing that you can do for yourself, for your community, for your country, for your family is to live your truth, to be true to who you are, to use your big four, your values, your vision, your mission, your purpose as your North Star to guide you through tumultuous times. And remember to trust yourself and realize you're going to fuck up. It's just part of the situation, man. It's part, it's, it's literally part of the equation. You cannot go undefeated. Never once in the history of humankind has anybody in any position, whether it be sports, whether it be entertainment, whether it be leadership, nobody has ever gone undefeated. So how come you would have that kind of pressure on yourself? What makes you any different than anybody else? Even those people who are legendary, even those people who come to mind as the Hall of Fame in any area. They're not undefeated either. 
There's no reason you should put that pressure on yourself as well. You're enough and the world needs you. And that's the ultimate thing I want to leave you with today. (laughs) Man, it's fucking crazy out there. And there's a lot of people on the sidelines bitching and complaining, scared, fucking shitless, man. They're scared out of their mind. They have no idea what to do next, nor do they have a plan for what they're going to do about it. They're quite literally waiting for somebody else to stand up, show up, and lead the way. As humans, we're a tribal species. It's just in our DNA. It takes an intentional behavior, an intentional act to stand up from the crowd, to do things differently. And right now, because there's so much fear mongering going on and there's so much misinformation driven by people with an agenda that is not in your best interest, you standing up and running against that tide is going to be extremely unpopular. It's going to feel like death itself because you're going to feel as if you are being discarded and cast away from the tribe. And in some ways, you are. You're being cast away from one tribe, but you will be accepted into the other. You'll be cast away from the mediocre. You'll be cast away from the fear obsessed. You will be cast away from the blind followers who refuse to do the heavy lifting of thinking for themselves. You'll be cast away and it will be terrifying for a while. Until you see the other tribe that is waiting to receive you with open arms, the tribe of strength, the tribe of vision, the tribe of leadership, the true driven tribe who understands that feeling of being outcast, who understands that feeling of being misunderstood, who understands the experience of what it means to be a leader and to have that burden on your shoulders 24-7, 365, unconditionally. That supportive tribe, us, you, are here, you're welcome here, and always will be. In uncertain times, you have a responsibility. In uncertain times, you have a role. In uncertain times, you have a position, and in uncertain times, you have value. You have the role and the position and the responsibility of leading. And... You are valuable enough for us to see you as a member of our own, which means we will not cast you aside and we won't count on you to be the only one. You're never alone. You'll be able to fly formation with us, shoulder to shoulder, bravely, courageously, and confidently into the future. Into the face of conflict. Into the face of uncertainty. So if that's for you, then welcome home. And now it's time to step up and lead. My friend, you are ready, even if you don't feel that way. You have what it takes. In fact, you have everything you need to accomplish everything you want. But sometimes you need to have it lit up for you, illuminated. And sometimes you just need somebody else to be there with you. And that's exactly what we're here to do with True Driven. So again, I say welcome home and again, stand by to get some because we need you right now. In uncertain times, we need you to be your best. In uncertain times, we need true driven. This is the time for us to step up. There is no more waiting. There is no more standing by to see if it's going to get better. There's no more standing by to see if somebody else is going to take the reins. We have to be willing to do it with limited, if anything, information, with no certainty, and no promise of comfort or success, but a true beating heart and a belief that we have what it takes and we'll do whatever it takes to win and to help others and lead others to win as well. That's all it takes, and you have that inside of you. Don't be perfect, just be awesome. Rise up and stand tall with us as the rest of the true drivens. All right, my friends, it's time to go. It's time to get after it. Thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure you're following us on Spotify. 
Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Hit those notifications so that you can be the first to know and stay in the know every time we bring new content. And thank you for sharing this far and wide. Make sure you share this message with somebody that you think needs to hear it right now. The more true drivens we have flying formation together, the stronger, the mightier we are. And remember, no matter what course you fly in life, fly high, fly fast, and fly far, stay driven. Stay driven.